Hi, I'm Ross, and today we're going to try some astrophotography, and we're going to give you guys a bit of a beginner's guide to what you can do to take some pictures of the stars. So we've come outside, the sun has just set, and behind us we've got some of the lights of Bristol, and we've come to track down my friend and Noah of all things astronomical, Mr. Lee Pullen. Okay, so we've got our cameras set up. Do we need lots of fancy equipment in order to do this? We need cameras that have full manual settings. Most digital SLRs have these, and quite a few compacts do as well. We also need a tripod to keep our cameras nice and steady, and shutter releases are really useful because we'll be taking long exposure shots. So here are some of the photos we took over the course of the evening. Throughout this video, we're going to give you guys some top tips for starting your own astrophotography with the aim of photographing the Orion Nebula. Where do we need to start in terms of changing any functions or anything on the camera? First thing we can do is set our lenses to manually focus on infinity. We need to flick our cameras on the side here. Each camera will have a slightly different setting, but we're looking for an M, which stands for manual. Okay. And then we twist the barrel until the indicator is lined up with the infinity symbol. The stars are really far away, so setting the camera lens to focus on infinity means that they'll appear as nice, sharp pinpricks of light. Camera lenses can alter how much light passes through. Uh, this setting is called aperture. Uh, it's a bit like the pupil of your eye, how it can get bigger and smaller. We want to set our cameras to be the widest possible aperture, and we do this by selecting the lowest possible F number. And what that is depends on the lens of your camera. This one goes as low as f2.8. There's another trick we can use to help with low light photography. Digital cameras can actually change how sensitive they are to light levels. This setting is called ISO. The higher the number, the more sensitive your sensor will be. But there's a catch, because if we go to really high ISOs, this introduces something called digital noise. It looks like coloured speckled grains, which isn't so good. So really, it's a balancing act. So <clears throat> I've tried taking a couple of photos, but they're not looking too great. Is there any other way that we can optimise what we're doing? Mm -hmm. We need to let our cameras get as much light into the sensors as possible. And we do this by changing the shutter speed. We need to be looking for something called bulb mode. This allows us to take whatever shutter length that we want. And we can do that by using our remote releases. These are really good for two things. They allow us to take photos without actually holding the camera, which might introduce some shake, and they also allow us to take nice long photos. Over there we can see Orion and Taurus the Bull, so what's going to be the best settings to kind of get both of those in shot? We need to make sure that we can see as much of the sky as possible. To do that, we're going to change the focal length of our lens. That's just a measure of how zoomed in we are. And to start with, we don't want to be zoomed in at all, so we want to have a nice low number, which on my lens is 24 millimetres. That's the widest it goes. And on yours, I think it's actually 18 millimetres. So we've taken some pretty good photos of the stars, but what's this orange glow we can see here in the foreground? And this is light pollution that we were trying to avoid by getting away from the centre of the city. But even from South Bristol, there's still quite a lot of it. Uh, other than getting away into the countryside, there's not a huge amount more we can do, but I actually think that it's quite a nice feature in this shot. It adds a bit of contrast to the dark sky. Okay, we photographed Orion but there's something in that constellation I'd really like to have a go at taking a photo of, and that is the Orion Nebula, one of my favourite deep sky objects. One of the finest deep sky objects in the whole sky. In order to try and take a photo of it, we need to zoom in even more. So to do that, we need a telephoto lens. Okay. How do we put this on? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we've got our gigantic lens on the front. Uh, I guess we just need to apply the principles we learned earlier on to take the photo. Mm -hmm. That's right, we're now at 300 millimeters. We're at f5.6. We've cranked the ISO up a little bit and we've got a slightly faster shutter speed as well. So let's give it a go. All right. So 
So we've come out of the cold, back inside with a nice hot mug of tea, and here we have our very own astro photos. And this is the Orion Nebula. It's absolutely amazing. <laughs> it's incredible to think that we can take photos like this without using specialist telescopes. We just used our cameras, a few different lenses, and a bit of knowledge. Of course, we're not going to win Astro Photographer of the Year with any of these shots, but we've taken some good first steps. We really do encourage you guys to give it a go though, so if you do take any photos, you can always tweet them to us. So go outside and good luck with your own astrophotography. If you'd like to explore more of the night sky, then check out our previous videos showing you how to find Orion and spot shooting stars. So for more science every week, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.